yes, it was 16 degrees outside, but I mean, that doesn't mean it's bad. I love the cold. Well, it warmed up. Now it's 38 degrees. So, I mean, heck, this is uh, beautiful weather. You can have uh, you can have a barbecue outside if you want. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to keep going with talking about the Microsoft Graph for Intune, and we're going to look at specifically how to interact with it through PowerShell. I mean, we could just chill on the front lawn. Like I said, 38 degrees. What's the problem? Okay, so what I've done here today is in order to get started with PowerShell and the Microsoft Graph, I wanted to use kind of an empty machine to just kind of go through the steps and setting it up because you really don't need much. I'm running PowerShell ICE as an admin and that's really all you need to do. Um, and essentially the way it works is, well, there's two ways, right? Um, there's interacting with the graph with PowerShell modules, which makes our life a little easier. And that's what we're gonna do today. And eventually what we can do is more of a method we've looked at previously in the tenant to tenant migration scripts, which is going to be more about uh, writing get requests and authenticating and building our own token. But for today, we're gonna to start by doing this. We're going to install module uh, Microsoft Graph, and we can just hit force. So the Microsoft.Graph is a pretty big module and it basically contains um, PowerShell commandlets to interact with all facets of the Microsoft Graph, right? So this may take you a little while to install. Um, if you don't have NuGet package provider, uh, which you should, you will be prompted to go ahead and install that. But don't worry if this takes some time. This could take anywhere from, you know, let's say three to six minutes. Um, so it's just gonna do its thing and we'll take a look at it when it's done. The first thing we have to do is connect to the graph. Now, if you remember before, we simply went to the Graph Explorer website and click sign in. It's a little different. So there's a whole bunch of commands, um, but we're gonna start with connect mg graph. And when you hit that, you're gonna be prompted to sign in just like you would on the website. So we're gonna do that at stevecapacity.com. And you see, it takes me to my OAuth screen here. And great tells me I'm uh, connected via delegated access and I uh, should be all set. They even give you some some nice uh, nice links. Uh, in fact, I'm probably gonna put these below since this is what we're working with. Okay, so in order to get to the Intune node, we're gonna do get Microsoft Graph, so MG, device management. Um, and you can't just call that because that's just the Intune node. So then we have to do something. So just like yesterday, we're gonna do managed devices or manage device. What's that gonna do? That gives me everything. Now, what did it just give me here? It gave me a whole bunch of stuff. So how do I even know what I'm looking at? So one cool thing, whenever you're working with PowerShell and data like this in real time, you can always take your command and do a pipe and do out grid view, or if you wanna be the real deal, and I know you wanna be the real deal, you're gonna do OGV for out grid view. So take a look at this. This is a little more readable. So what is this giving us? This is giving us the object ID. Remember we said each device in Intune has an ID. It's gonna give us a whole bunch of information here. So the Azure AD device ID, because devices have different Azure IDs and we'll get to that. Um, and then we can see a whole bunch of other info. I'm just gonna slide over a little to show you. And you're gonna see the device name, the enrollment type, Everything, again, that you would get from Intune. Now, let's say you want to expand upon that and look for a certain device. So with PowerShell, I'm gonna make that a variable. I'm gonna say all, actually, I'm just gonna call it Intune devices. And we're gonna make that equal to get MG device management, manage device. So if I run that and clear this, now every time I call this, the Intune device variable, it's given me everything. So what I wanna do is I wanna look for a very specific device, right? So I wanna look for, let's go ahead. I wanna do is I wanna look for devices where the email address associated is me. And I wanna see my devices. So let's do this, let's do Intune devices 
where object, and this is how you, so we can say email address is equal to Steve Warner at stevecapacity.com. And let's bring that back. Ah, much shorter list, much shorter list. But the problem is, you know, again, we could do that and we can add the OGV pipe at the end of that. Okay, and you can see it's a little easier here, but here's the thing. I, I might not need everything here. So let's think about what I want. I want the device name um, and maybe I want the, let's see here. I want the OS version. So device name and OS version. So let's try to build that. In team. So actually, you know what we could do first? We can take Steve's devices and we can make that the variable. So we could say Steve's devices. I'll just say Steve PC. Steve devices equals Intune devices where the object email address is equal to Steve Miner at Steve Capacity. Dot com. So if I run this and clear this, I can say Steve Devices. I can also let's Steve Devices count. There was six. Okay. Okay. So let's say Steve Devices select object. We want the device name, comma, OS version. So now this is going to give us just what we want. So I can see my devices, I can see their name, I can see the OS version, and um, we could format that a little bit. So now we can say Steve's devices where object, blah, 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 email address. We can pipe that again to say, to add that in there. Select object, device name, OS version. You see, we're kind of building our own little query table here. So let's clear all this. And now let's just call Steve's devices. Now when we call it, we're just going to get that consolidated list right? Um, which is really nice. If I wanted to further, you know, filter through these things, or maybe I just want to see uh, where the, the build contains uh, this last one, 2861. So I can say Steve devices where object. Uh, what I do here. And these are just PowerShell filters uh, where the OS version uh, let's say contains 2861. That didn't come back with anything. Maybe that's a match. Okay, it was a match. Um, see, I don't know everything about PowerShell. It takes me a minute. And some of you that there who are experts or watching this, you're like, man, he put the he put the asterisk. He hit you know contains. It takes us a second, um, and I would have looked it up if I forgot because everything is different in PowerShell. But yeah, so that's what I can do. I could say where the object matches 2861, and, and that's how I can kind of filter things down. Okay, so this video was supposed to be a little bit longer, but as I'm looking at this, we covered a lot, right? We covered how to install the PowerShell SDK graph module. We talked about how to make those calls, how to do out grid view, how to filter. And before we go into the next thing, which is to build a function based on this, I thought it would be a good time to pause and say, you know what, let's let that soak in first. Let's come back. Let's save the function for the next part. And, um, you know, I'll get that to you soon. Five, four, three.